Hello everyone, I am Jose Cabello, master's students at the University of Rhode Island. I'm here to present our work on using reinforcement learning for tuning genetic algorithms. As many here know, genetic algorithms are powerful tools for tackling combinatorics and optimization problems. However, these algorithms, along with other evolutionary algorithms, require configuration of hyperparameters and reproduction operators before commencement. These values are highly dependent on the problem instance, and the quality of solutions are in turn dependent on these values. Therefore, tuning of genetic algorithms is a crucial step for attaining good solutions. Somewhat quickly, we propose learning, we, we propose a reinforcement learning approach to adaptively set parameters for genetic algorithms solving capacitative vehicle routing problems. To explain this work, I will introduce three important components of this work and how they were combined within our approach and then finish with our results. Now to capacitative vehicle routing problem. Before I discuss that, I will introduce the VRP, the vehicle routing problem. It is a combinatorial optimization problem and it is NP hard. This means the difficulty of solving these grows exponentially as the problem grows. The objective is to find a set of optimal routes for a fleet of vehicles to visit so that the set of customers may all be visited. It is easy to see why this problem is so greatly researched as it has tremendous potential for saving for many organizations, making this a cornerstone problem in the field of operations research computer science and mathematics. Here, we see an example of the VRP. It contains 14 nodes, which are referred to as city or customers. There's a single depot where the vehicles are based off. The values next to the edges indicate the cost that is incurred by traversing from one node to the next. Three routes are used to service these nodes and a cost of 66 is obtained. It is to be noted that the term route and vehicle can be used interchangeably here. Now, speaking in the context of optimization, the objective function is to minimize the cost incurred of organizing these vehicles to service these nodes, uh, subject to some constraints though. And depending on these constraints, the problems may be classified as a variant of the VRP. Some commonly known variants include the periodic VRP, VRP with time windows, VRP with backhauls, and more. Our interest lies on the CVRP, the capacitative vehicle routing problem. The CVRP has the additional consideration that the vehicles have some capacity constraint when servicing these nodes. An example is shown here. It displays a CVRP with a single depot in the center, servicing 12 customer nodes with four vehicles. The demand for each customer can be seen next to the nodes indicated by the D. Again, being an NP-hard problem, it is difficult to solve these problems. Still, many methods have been designed to tackle this. One such method is the genetic algorithms. Genetic algorithms are a subclass of evolutionary algorithms often used to tackle problems like this. It is a search heuristic that incorporates the notions of natural selection and evolution to search for solutions to problems and iteratively improve on them. In particular, it mimics the num a number of natural and genetic growth processes, being the selection, crossover, and mutation processes. The GA process is shown, is shown as here. It's shown here. It is initialized with the creation of a population that is a set of feasible solutions to the problem being solved. These individual solutions called chromosomes are randomly generated and as such might not be of high quality yet. They are improved on by an iterative process. In this process, the chromosomes are paired up by, and their makeup are recombined to form two new offsprings with makeup from each parent chromosome in a process called the crossover operation. Here in the diagram is referred to as the reproduction step. To explore new avenues, random changes made onto the offspring's makeup in the mutation step. The offsprings are grouped together to form the new, the new population for the new generation. The fitness of, the, of this generation would then be evaluated against the objective, as seen here. And then the new chromosomes are selected based on their fitness to repeat the process. This iterative process then improves the solution. This would mean that with a large enough number of generations to repeat this, we can all but guarantee that the algorithms will produce acceptable solutions. In other words, even though this process is stochastic, with enough time, we can produce solutions to difficult problems of high quality. Like many heuristics, the performance of the genetic algorithm can be tied to its hyperparameter values that are initialized at the beginning. This makes it obvious as to why tuning genetic algorithms is crucial for solving optimization problems. During this, it is extremely common to run a genetic algorithm for a single instance several times. That along with the fact that the performance of the algorithm correlates with the number of generations that an algorithm is executed means that the tuning of genetic algorithms can be very computationally intensive. 
So the generic algorithm is a great tool to have. It's versatility and simple process mixes so that it can tackle even the largest of problems. And it has a wide range of applications that is being used for today. Though this, this is a stochastic process, in a sense, the quality of the solution can be controlled by the number of generations we allow for the executing of this algorithm. But again, since it is stochastic, it can be viewed negatively as it is at the mercy of randomness. And the relationship between the time allotted and the quality of solutions means that we can execute the algorithm, we must execute the algorithm for a large number of generations to obtain acceptable solutions, given the notion that it may be somewhat slow. The performance is tied with the hyperparameter values as well, which are often very cumbersome to tune. And an additional point to be made is that the algorithm, as the algorithm continues, the diversity of the population will converge. This is a downside as the convergence makes it increasingly difficult for the algorithm to explore other avenues and may lead it to get stuck at a local optima as opposed to reaching the true global optima. The last three points are addressed within our work. Now for the reinforcement learning. It is a field within machine learning that focuses on an agent collecting reward generated by the actions that the agent takes while interacting with the environment. It differs from the more standard fields of machine learning of supervised and unsupervised learning in that they both make use of data sets and make predictions or acknowledge patterns within the data. Rather, in reinforcement learning, it does not make use of the data in the same sense, but rather observes its environment. And then, and instead of making a prediction, it chooses an action from a list of possible actions. The learning method, this learning method is a growing in many fields and is commonly used for automation and other similar fields. Here we show a high level overview of the reinforcement learning model. The model is driven by the intelligent agent shown at the bottom. The agent interacts with the environment and influences it by choosing an action to conduct onto it. A simple example would be some robot, the agent, must manage its way out of a maze, the environment. For it to do that, some, it must take some actions such as moving forward, backwards, left, or right. After the agent chooses the action, the agent observes the new state it finds itself in and collects a reward for that action. Again, back to our example, after the robot chooses some action, the robot would observe its new state, and such as how far is it from the exit. And then it will collect some reward based off the state, such as giving it a high reward if it is closer to the exit, or a lesser reward if it's further away, or even giving it a negative reward to penalize it. Therefore, the objective of the agent would then be to maximize its reward. So how does now, so our, our proposed approach, how does this all tie in? All right, so here's a simple overview of what the process is. We have instances of the CVRP, which are solved through genetic algorithm, which in turn are tuned by the reinforcement learning. So now for the genetic algorithm used for solving the CVRP. To address one of the issues of it being, having to require a large amount of time often to require acceptable solutions, the algorithm was executed entirely on GPUs. This is because with the recent advancements of the graphical processing units, the GPUs, it provided a tremendous speed ups of the code. The acceleration is usually done through the parallelization of the process, whereas the traditional approach is to execute this in sequence. Now, so for our, for our approach, our agent was following a Q learning algorithm, which I will explain in a bit. The environment was then the accelerated genetic algorithm that was solving the VRP. The agent interacted with the environment through its action, which was set in a hyperparameter values. Those values being actually the crossover rate and the mutation rate. The state, after the agent conducts its action, it observed the state and the reward the state being the cost savings incurred from the action and the diversity of the population as well. And then a reward, which would be the function value based off the state. The crossover rate is a value that is set at the initialization of the algorithm to service the crossover operation. It determines the probability of choosing one parent gene over the other. Likewise, the mutation rate determines the probability of a gene being mutated. These values are traditionally kept unchanged throughout the execution of the algorithm, but this work decided to diverge from that to explore its benefits. Now for the action space within this. The action space consisted of all, the set of all possible tuples containing values from the, for these rates. The rates range from zero to one and were grouped into 10 intervals, giving us a total of 100 pairs. The state space. 
The state space was defined as a tuple containing the values of the cost difference between the previous generation and the most recent generation. There was a total of six cost savings, which I will explain in a bit. The diversity of the population was also brought into consideration. This was to address one of the other downfalls of the genetic algorithm, which is that it lacks diversity in the later generations, and it becomes at risk to fall into a local optimal rather than, again, finding the global optimal. The diversity index of the population is used to define the state because the reward was based off the state, and this would incentivize the agent to man maintain its diversity. The reward was then given off both states. If there was a high savings in cost, then a higher value for the reward would be given and vice versa. Likewise, if there was a high population diversity index, then the agent was rewarded more and again, vice versa. Displayed is a table of the rewards for each possible state. The column headers indicate the diversity index state defined from left to right as very high diversity, high diversity, mid diversity, low diversity, and very low diversity. The rows indicated the cost savings defined from top to bottom as very high cost saves, very high cost savings, low cost savings, very, very low cost savings, no change in the cost, and then finally an increase in the cost. Though this was, this was unlikely as the nature of the GA would not let this happen. We implemented a cube learning algorithm into our approach. It is an off-policy model-free reinforcement learning algorithm. The focus of the algorithm is to create and, queue, uh, create and update in a queue table. The queue table holds the rewards collected from each action at each state. The action uses the state to decide upon the best actions to take, a, to take given a state. A more formal definition of the algorithm is given below. The equation determines how a queue table value is updated. So a queue table value would then be updated by, we're looking at it from the first term on the right-hand side, which would be the old value of the queue, the old queue value given a state and an action pair. It is then summed up with the product of the learning rate and the temporal difference. The temporal difference being everything inside the parentheses is defined as the most recent award, reward obtained from the state action pair plus a discounted value of what would be the estimated future value for the next step minus the old Q value. This process lets the agent, the agent learn based off its action and determine what is the best action given the state. However, even if the agent knows the best action given the information it has received, it might not always choose that action. This is because a major notion in the queue learning algorithm is explore versus exploit. This means that after the queue table is updated, the agent has the option to either choose what it believes to be the best action or exploit in, or choose some random action or explore in. This random action is chosen with the probability of epsilon. Here's a figure going into much de deeper detail as to how this approach works. At the top left corner, it is shown that the problem data is brought onto the CPU and transferred onto the GPU. Following the arrow, we see the data passed onto the GPU and more specifically the blocks it is composed of. The blocks consist of smaller units, threads, and is here where the data is passed onto each thread and the threads process, process in parallel as indicated. The parallelization is done to create the cost table. The table containing the cost of traversing from node to node on the CVRP. The cost table is in turn used for calculating fitness values of the population for determining the new parent population. Then the iterator process of the genetic algorithm commences and the population is crossed over and mutated. Additional work is done to remove any clonal chromosomes and to encourage diversity. As the genetic algorithm process iterates and in between generations, the reinforcement learning agent observes the current state of the genetic algorithm, that being its diversity and the cost savings and observes its related reward. The agent then records this information and decides upon a new action, new values for the crossover and mutation rates. These values are passed onto the genetic algorithm and the process repeats until it reaches some terminal state and providing a solution. And now for some results. So the model was created and tested on a small number of benchmark problems. The instances range from 40 to 70 customers and include a larger, a larger one with 200 nodes. The problems were solved five times each. The results obtained by this procedure were then compared with those obtained by executing the genetic algorithm with static parameters. These parameters, these static parameters were obtained through a design of experiments approach to find the best single values that would, could be used. For the set, the solutions obtained by this approach outperformed those obtained by the alternative method with up to 11% improvement. Here's the table showing those results. Column two is the problem label and it details the number of nodes and numbers of the vehicles. For example, Problem two, BN45K5 indicates that 40, there was 45 nodes and it used K, uh, five routes. Column three is the best known solution as reported by, this, by the literature. 
Column four is the best solution obtained by the GA algorithm run only on a CPU with static hyperparameters. Column five uh, reports the results obtained by solving the problem using its GPU version of the algorithm with static hyperparameters. The six column reports the results of, of our proposed approach. And the last two columns provide additional information on the five runs made for each problem, being the average cost obtained and the standard deviation of the runs. As can be seen from the table, the proposed approach shows equal or better performance to that of the static hyperparameter CPU and GPU-based genetic algorithms for 11 of the 12 problems. For problem A, all, all the genetic algorithm implementations improved the best known solution. And for problem 11, the CPU genetic algorithm finds a better solution than the best known solution. The average results also demonstrates equal or better performance in the static GPU-based genetic algorithm shown its consistency. In this work, a reinforcement, a reinforcement learning approach has been designed to adaptively set parameters for a genetic algorithm used to solve capacitative vehicle routing problems. For a set of benchmark problems, the solutions obtained by the RLGA are better than those obtained for the same set of problems using a static parameter, static parameters from a design of experiments approach. Runs with larger amounts of nodes are in the process along with additional reinforcement learning algorithms. Success with large problem sets will add to the methods that can be used to obtain good solutions for complex practical problems using genetic methods with reasonable computing efforts. Since this, this approach presented here acts and parameters that are fundamental to all genetic algorithms, they can widely be implemented for solving other combinatorial and nonlinear optimization problems utilizing genetic algorithms. This concludes my presentation. Thank you all very much for your time.